my name is Chad Oakley, and uh, by title, I'm the president and chief operating officer of a company called Charles Aris Inc. Uh, we're an executive search firm. First, I'll tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the executive search business now for eight years. Uh, I have uh, personally uh, led uh, 176 closed searches um, uh, during that eight-year uh, time period. It is my hope that through this presentation, you will walk out of the door with at least two or three things that you feel like you can go back to your companies tomorrow and say, guys, I've got an idea. I heard a best practice that I think we can do today that would help us to better attract A players. Today, what I want to try to do is communicate some best practices for how we can all identify and attract and retain those A players. That's really the, the goal for us today, okay? All right, let's do it. The first is, what do we mean by candidate-driven market? The second is, how do we actually define A player? We'll also talk about the most important subject that I think we'll talk about today is, why do A players change jobs? Fourth is, what interviewing best practices will help my company to land A players? We're gonna talk about how can my company avoid candidate turndowns and fall offs. We've been in business for 42 years, Charles Zaris has. Would you believe that we've never had more open searches in our 42 year history than we have today? 95.7% of individuals with a college degree or higher are gainfully employed today. They're still hard to find. That's where we get a candidate driven market. By candidate driven market, we mean the following. 95.7% of Americans with a four-year college degree or higher gainfully employed and attracting the very best talent is tough. Let's talk about how we define A players. An A player is a candidate that qualifies among the top 10% of those available for a position. A players exist at every level of your business. And the very best companies in the world are those that successfully recruit the top 10% at each one of those levels. So we define A players by a candidate that qualifies among the top 10% of those available for a position, and A players exist at every level of your org chart, regardless of pay. Why do A players at any level of your business go from one company to another? And as I'm sharing this with you, think about yourself. I guarantee the last job that you accepted, the place where you work today, you joined your company because of some combination of what we're about to talk about. Company is number one, right? The compelling story that makes your company exciting, okay? Number two are people, right? The age old saying still plays true today, even though I know we've been talking a lot about technology during this conference, at the end of the day, people don't go to work for companies, people go to work for people. The third is the job itself, right? Roles and responsibilities that ensure this position will have impact and exposure. Those are two key buzzwords that A players love. Impact, in other words, the job I have must matter, and B, exposure. The work that I'm doing gets seen by really important people. Okay? And lastly is opportunity. The career and financial goals that can be obtained through superior performance. If you want to attract an A player, you effectively must sell that A player on all four of these areas. Let's face it, that's a big part of our job as recruiters, is to think like the candidate thinks. See what the candidate sees. Our job as recruiters is to proactively provide them with the answers to these questions before they ask them. The questions that a candidate's gonna ask about company prestige is, does this company have a brand name? Is this company known as a leader innovator in the industry? And how will this company's name look on my resume? All right, number two, people. Talent level, management style, and culture of coworkers. The first is the talent of coworkers. If at your company you have a turnover problem, hit the candidate with that between the eyes right up front. Tell them. You're about to start interviewing with people here in our business. I'm sure you're gonna have questions for them. I wanna tell you right now, we've had a turnover problem with our company historically. Here's why, here's what we've done to change it, and here's why it's not gonna be an issue when you arrive. A players value that honesty. If you've got some superstars in your company, I know that they've got a lot on their plate, but make sure the A player knows about them. Ideally, they spend time with them, but if they can't spend time with them, talk about them. Number three is the job, right? Roles and responsibilities to ensure that this position will have impact and exposure. Two key buzzwords that A players love, impact and exposure, right? The work an A player does must matter. 
Title. How does my title compare to what I have now? Typically, this is more important than a candidate will let on. Here's that other key buzzword. What level of exposure to senior executives can I expect? If you're trying to recruit an A player, and that A player is going to have the chance to sit in on a meeting or present to some C-suite executive once a quarter, tell them about it. Make sure they know. What does an A player ask themselves? The following questions. Compensation. What does the entire compensation package look like? And uh, how does it compare to what I have now? Cash, bonuses, stock options, restricted stock, etc. We feel like the best companies out there have a simple one-page tear sheet, right, as we call it, just a little tear sheet, that outlines a summary of the benefits. The very best companies in the world, in my opinion, they'll say, here's the current offer that we will have for you. Here's what it's gonna, your compensation should look like next year and the year after that. They'll show them a three-year trajectory. And then career path. Where does this position lead within the company? I think for most companies, wouldn't you agree that the best talent has the opportunity to, to move left and right as opposed just to north and south? Here's one best practice that you might be able to, to take into consideration. The worst companies assign scheduling to a junior level scheduler, and that person gets the list of interviewers, calls the assistants and says, when is the first opening that this person has that works with all these other individuals and they push it out five weeks. The best companies call and say, I've got two people locked down for next Friday. What is your person doing? Can you move this? Can you move that? In other words, they're proactively trying to make the calendars work. And thank you all very much for being here.